Hi there, I'm Chris Harper, and this is a tape on self-defense. What we want to do with this tape is we want to take it from a slightly different angle than a lot of the self-defense programs that are out there. A lot of what you'll see today is everything is predicated off a certain technique. It's fed from that technique, then we run through that technique, assuming that our defense is going to work against that, and he's not going to react in any other different way, and then we'll walk through that to our finishing technique and end it. The problem is there's a lot of factors that will come in in between the beginning and the end of that technique that you just can't possibly know about in self-defense. If you're fighting someone that you spar with all the time or you work out with or you know their style, then you've got information to go from there. But when it's actual self-defense, there's nothing to go from from that point. So what we want to do here is we're going to pick some simple techniques that are really common, defend against them just enough to get past them, and then we're going to go for control of the body. That's what we're going to basically base the video off of is more of control the body, control the person, your opponent. That way, once you've got control, you're pretty much open to take your selection of techniques that are required or whatever you need to finish the fight. Stick with us. Good. Did it go bad on that one? <laughs> Good. That's kind of why I just paused and froze and looked at the camera. That way we can fade it out. Yeah. Thank you. Hi there. Hi there. Okay. So what we want to do here then is we want to give you a base to go from. So we're going to give you a stance and then we'll give you a hand structure and then we'll go from there and feed some techniques into that structure. First thing we want to do is we want to stand sideways, take a step forward, get yourself a base. You don't want to be too far forward, too far extended. Just kind of want to be natural because that's usually how you're going to be walking forward anyway. It's just like a basic step. Okay. So once you're there and you've got your base and your stand, <clears throat> put your hands up. Get your hands in a kind of a natural forward position. You don't want them laying against you and you don't want them way out here. Just kind of in a natural free for all, just like as if you're saying, nope, sorry, I don't want to do anything. So you're kind of just up there floating with your elbows. What you're going to do with this now is you're creating a box in the center of your body. You're creating a gate where you're forcing your opponent to travel through that gate between your arms. Or you're going to force him to travel around your arms. He's going to have to take a circular path. Okay? What that does is it basically gives them only two options. If you're standing this way here, you have far too many different, you create some gates this way too, but it's not as common also. You're not going to be standing in a store or wherever, and you're even in your house or whatever, and you're not going to turn sideways and get into a fighting stance. You're going to be really natural. It's going to happen when you're usually your back's against the wall or whatever. So you kind of want to be relaxed there with your arms up. Feed the, or pardon me, create the box so that when he punches, he's basically feeding this punch between your arms or going circular around the outside of your arms. Okay, And then we're going to deal with that in a minute, how to actually stop those incoming techniques. But at least we've created a set pattern that he has to deal with just as so much as you do. Okay, So what we're doing there now, basically, is we're getting an attachment. Okay, Once we have an attachment, if my hands are up and he punches and I stop this technique, that gives me the attachment. After we get an attachment, we want to control. Okay, so we're gonna get an attachment, get control of his body. Once we're in control of the body, then we can finish what we want to do. Okay, so then after the control comes, then comes our finishing, and it's over. But if we take this from the premise that we're gonna practice a certain technique, go through that technique until it's picture perfect from the end, that's fine and dandy, but if that technique doesn't come about, you're kinda in trouble. So what you want is you wanna create yourself a gate. Make this person deal with it, then you can go in, get your attachment, get a control on his body, and then finish it. Okay. Good. Did you cue it yet before or did you back it up? Okay, we're rolling? Good. Okay. Okay, so before we were left off was we had this gate, and then we were gonna feed a straight line into the center of it. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna bring somebody in, they're gonna feed a straight line into me, I'll show you to defend that center line. Okay, so if I'm standing like this, he's coming in. If he's feeding just a straight punch straight in towards me, pretty simple to defend against. It's probably the most direct one, a common one you're going to reach into. So as he comes in, I'm just going to cover my center line. Okay, so if I move over here just a little bit, just to give the angle a bit more. So you come in, boom, I'm covering my center line. Noticing the fact that I don't have to move very much, okay? I'm just covering that center line. So it's not like I have to bring my arm from way back here and reach across or parry it or any kind of movement like that. Basically, just covering on the center line as it comes in. If I use the other arm here, it really doesn't matter. As he comes in, I just cover it here. Okay. What this does now is it gives me an attachment. As he comes in with this hand, 
boom, I get that attachment. That attachment is where we're going to go to get our control. So we need to have that. If I, as he comes in, if I stop that, I've stopped the attack from coming in, I've stopped the punch, but it leaves me no farther off than when I had this attachment. So I'm better off to stay here and keep this attachment, and then I can use the sensitivity I get from his body instead of stepping back and then launching an attack on my own, which gives him a chance to defend. So what we want to do is we want to use his attack to give us a defense so that we can go in from there. Okay, so now if he feeds the other side down the straight line, it's the same thing. He's still coming into this box. We still have that same box. We haven't changed it. So as he's coming into me, I'm just going to center line. Okay? So all I'm going to do is basically just tilt my body two directions. So it's just a matter of tilting the body to the center line. Okay? It's the same thing I'm doing. So as he feeds a punch in, boom, he changes sides. It really doesn't matter. Okay? Because I'm, I'm using the same structure. And he's still coming into this same box. It's that same box. Just keep punching there. So it's the same box. There's, nothing here has to change for me. So I'm just covering on center line. So I don't care what he does, what kind of technique he does, or anything, as long as it comes into that box, comes forward, and it's on center line. I can deal with it the exact same way. It doesn't matter his hand formation or anything. So then from there, what that's going to leave us now is the next one's going to be circular. OK, from there, I think we're going to edit that, right? And again? Yeah, just step out. OK, cue it again. OK, so now what we're going to do is he's going to come back in again with the same box, the same structure. He's going to use a circular type of technique. That's right. So he's going to come up and around. Boom. Now, even though he's going out and around, I don't have to follow him way out here, way out towards that direction. Because he's got to get, eventually he's got to get back to my body. So I'm going to just cover, and I'm going to go forward. OK? Basically, this is a concept of the interception. As he comes in, boom, I intercept it, stopping his arm from actually traveling through. Okay? If I was to, as he punches, if I was to go here to stop it, I can still stop it, but I'm going towards this energy and meeting his energy straight on, which is kind of the whole, defeating that whole purpose of efficiency and where you want to be anyway. And then, once again, you're pulling back away from this person, which you don't want to do. You always want to be moving forward so that you can get in. That's where you want to go. You want to go towards him, because you're using his attack as, his def as your defense. Now, if you reach backwards in any way, shape, or form, then you're losing that opportunity. You're going to give him an opportunity to defend, and we don't want that. We want to keep it as very open on our side as possible. Other side, same thing. Boom. Because I'm not changing my structure of this box. As he comes in, I'm just going forward. Also, as I go forward, you know, so keep my head down, too, keeping the amount of protection a lot higher, too. If I've got my face way up, if something ever does slip through, I don't want to take it on the chin. I want to be here. Boom. Worst he's going to get is a graze on that side of the head, which I'm not going to be concerned with because I've got this whole area that's open, and we're going straight in, right? So that's the same once again. So he's got the circular out here and circular out on that side. Boom. OK. Good. OK, we'll cut it again there. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take those straight lines we just had and the circular lines. We're going to put them both together and just let you see what it looks like with both of them working in and out. So Paul. OK, so if he brings it straight in and then he brings it circular overhand there, I've got to contend with it here. Do you notice me being, I'm able, still able to contend with both of them without changing the structure? If I had to deal with this one and then as that one came in, if I had to change something to bring back over here, something, I would break that whole structure and break the entire purpose of that. So you need to be able to keep this structure. In other words, be able to keep your body moving forwards constantly. As you're coming here, here, you're still able to move forward and close in on this person. Okay. So on the other side, it's the same thing. If he just feeds that straight down here and I end up on this side and I've got to defend this one, it's the same thing. I'm not having to break my structure down. Okay. Just like that. Other factor being there on the same stuff to, is where I'm meeting him. Okay, I'm meeting him about halfway out of his arm, really. It just depends on how he throws it and what he's throwing. I want to be able to cover that. Here, I'm just covering center. I don't have to worry. I just have to come and get on center line. Eventually, we're going to intercept. It's impossible not to. On the outside, I just got to raise up and create a kind of a gate here or a, a bridge where he's going to have to hit it eventually. I just have to be careful on where the hand's carrying afterwards. Okay, so but if I keep my structure good, my head down, I got an extremely good chance of dealing with that. 
it's also the factor you deal with here too is you, it's a self event situation, so you're probably not worth dealing with the world's best box or anything. Okay, so we're just basically putting that in like that. So now if he switches it to the other side again, so you can see that. Okay, I'm just cutting into there. Boom. Okay, so that comes in. Boom. And you can always get tighter and, and cleaner with this where you can just sit right in tight here, dropping your chin below your shoulder, depending on the type of punch that's coming in, leaving you to still come in forward. Okay. That's right. Boom. Okay, so we'll break it there. Okay, so just to review that, standing side, we just take a step into it, get our base, okay? A little bit, 60% of the weight on your knee. Hands are up here in front of you, not too far extended, just out at a natural height, okay? Creating that box there once again, that we're able to close with the center line, just come into center, so you really only have to move about three or four inches with that, okay? Sometimes as you move it, you can dip this shoulder in forward too. Just puts more forward pressure on the opponent's arm. Okay, so that's our center line coverage right from there. Now, all I have to do is cut outwards this way. Okay, it's important you don't turn your body and push out in this direction. You're just cutting forward with your arm, okay? Pushing your shoulder out. So we just want to reach forward into that 45 degree zone kind of thing. Okay, you got to really avoid that habit of trying to go 90 degrees out from the sides to meet what's coming in because you don't need to meet it. You want to cut it off at the pass, right? So you want to cut it off where it's originating from. Okay, or where it's being generated. So we're gonna go right from there. And then you're basically just taking that on your forearm, everywhere you go, forearm. Okay, if it comes in a little lower, you can just dip it down a bit. It doesn't really matter. Higher, well, if it goes higher, it's gonna be above your head, and you don't have to worry about it anyway. So just deal with what's there. Remember, this is 80% of the time, this is that zone you're gonna be attacked in anyway, so this is what you have to deal with. Kind of cover it in those areas right here. Travis? <laughs> yeah, that's why. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Okay, so now the next segment we're going to do after we did our gate and our box dealing with techniques coming in at us is we're going to use that attachment and we're going to go from there to gain control. And how we're going to do that, one method we're going to use is called Dumog. And once you get a hold of the person, you can take a choke point on their body or a a reference point or a, a main point of balance for the human body and you can move them around or gain control of their body. But To do this you need to get a hold of them first and that's how we do it is we get that attachment. Okay? Versus just straight hitting them which are kind of attached on attached. We don't have as much control over the person. So since we want to get control on this level we're going to do that by gaining it off of the defense. Instead of just striking it right away we're going to go for the actual control from there. So Paul comes in. Okay. That's right. So now if he's coming in towards me, and I'm defending against this, the moment I make contact with his arm, this is my attachment. Now I want to take this attachment and use it to get control. Now it can be different, so it requires a bit of sensitivity because you never know which arm he's going to attack with. You don't know which one you're going to defend with depending on how you're standing at that particular time. So as he, maybe if he's coming forward a little higher up in my body here, boom, that's right. I'm going to be higher up on my arm, so it's going to be a little bit different for me. Now if he's coming for maybe more of a stomach shot and I have to bend here, I'm going to end up closer to the elbow. And this is going to relate into a little bit different type of technique. Okay? So, now to get past that, as he punches in, I get the attachment. Now the first dumog that I can do from here, basically is going to be the top of half of his arm, because I'm already on the top half of his arm. If I was way up here, then I deal with this part. Okay? One thing we don't want to do is jump from one place to another, we want to deal with what we actually have going on at the time. So since I'm here, the easiest one is just to gain control of his wrist with my wrist. It's just standard grab there, but I'm not going to bring this down. I'm going to leave this arm here, I'm just going to grab. The moment I have that grab, I'm going to use the choke point or that point of balance of his body that's in his elbow. I want to push down on that, and the moment I push down on that, it pulls his shoulder forward. Okay? And that breaks his balance. Okay? So as he brings that punch in, I'm going to stop that, get a hold of this, and break his balance. Okay. Now, if he does it from the other side, if he punches through into the center of that box, and I deal with the same thing here, I'm on the outside of his arm, he's on the inside of mine, I can do the exact same thing. I can get a hold of this arm, get on top of that elbow, and break his balance. Okay. You see how that affects him as he brings the right lead in? Okay. As I break that balance, pulls that back leg off the ground. Okay. At this point, the moment I apply this pressure here down, 
I've gained control. I gained control all the way to here, okay? So now what that does is he feeds in again, okay? I get this here, I got a decision now. Once I've got control of the body, I can go wherever I want, okay? That's gonna be the point where we're gonna finish up with a technique or something. Instead of going from outside range, trying to defend the punch and just going straight to a technique. I'm gonna get control so that I can more or less ensure that my technique's gonna go in. Because if I'm standing here and he throws a punch and I go here and then I wanna throw an elbow in, I'm leaving a lot of space for him to defend against that or get rid of it. Now, if he throws that punch in and I'm here, okay, I can grab that wrist, I can get the control here. Now he's off balance. If I want to throw an elbow in, I can throw an elbow in, and he's going to have a lot harder time defending against it. Okay, we're going to make that. Okay, now from here, we're going to go to the same thing, same type of feed, just using a different choke point on the body, different dumog. As he comes in now, as he brings that punch in, I'm going to maybe end up like this. This is all dependent on how I end up, how I stop this attack as I'm coming in. You notice I'm kind of leaning forward, bent over. Sometimes you are, sometimes you're very high up, okay? Chances are though, if he's gonna, if I sense, I get a sense he's coming low, I'm gonna have to lean into that a bit. So I'm gonna end up higher on the arm. I might feel I'm a little too far to reach backwards to grab his wrist, okay? Once I get to that certain point. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna, I could probably make this happen. We're gonna go to a different choke point. Just because my hands are already here, is I'm going to reach around and grab this bone here. The upper portion of the arm between the shoulder and the elbow. I'm going to get a hold of that. Now, as I get a hold of this arm, I get the same type of choke point. Okay? What I'm doing is, I know once again, I'm moving the shoulder and breaking the balance across the shoulders. Okay? I'm going to pull this down, or I'm going to force it up. Okay? So as he comes in, I get that attachment. I'm just going to grab this arm. Okay? And then I'm going to reef it down, breaking his balance. Okay? Or as he comes in and I stop it, I grab this arm, I'm going to push it up, okay? With either one, once I break the balance, okay, the moment I break that balance, he's out of, totally out of control and I can go to my technique, my finishing technique. Okay, other side there, once again, same, pretty much the same thing. As I reach across there, I'm straight in, okay, grabbing this arm. Noticing once again that my body's forward, okay? As I stop this, if I was standing in a different stance that didn't enable me to go straight forward without any change of footwork, then this wouldn't work so well. But since I'm here and I'm right on it, all I have to do is step in, grab this arm, and I have my doom up. Okay. Once again, cross there, grab this arm, and I'm up and I can walk him. Okay. So you'll notice once we get a hold of that arm, you have total control of the body. It's extremely hard for someone, once this is up, for them to deal with that, to do anything. Same thing with the pull down. So now, given the fact that as we attach here, there's a time frame where we have to deal with the other arm, other parts of the body. That's why the moment we get the sensitivity, we need to move, we need to deal with that, okay? So, so far that gives us two. That gives us one on the wrist and one on the arm, okay? Now from there, pretty much the next best place we're gonna go to is gonna be the neck. Okay, I'll just, I'll just. Okay, so now we're going to go to the neck now. Instead of using the wrist or the, using the top of the arm, we're going to go straight up to the head. Okay. As he comes in now with this punch, boom. Okay. Still have this option if I really want it. I can still go to here. Okay. But just for this point, we're going to go straight to the neck. Okay, so what we're doing here is I'm just taking a step inward to his body, and I'm going to go for the neck here. The moment I get this head or the neck, because it's all attached piece here, if you can control the neck, you can control the head. And wherever the head goes, the body's going to go. It has to. <laughs> okay. So as I get a hold of this, now I'm going to do is turn it. Okay. The moment I turn it, I'm just going to take it off into a balance, an off balance position. Okay. Take him away from his balance. If I turn it this way, I've got to pull him this way. Okay. What that does, once again, gives us control. As I come in here and get this, I can gain control of the person. Okay. Granted, with this type of a movement, he can still use his arms. But as he comes in, boom, OK, I'm going to get this here. I can always make it a lot more difficult on him. Bring him to the ground, chokes, whichever, OK? Which is all our finishing stuff afterwards. The point of this is to get that control. Boom, OK, take this here, get the control. Good. Okay, so now we got to that point where we've used the wrist, we've used the upper arm 
elbow, upper arm, neck, we've got to control the body, okay? Now what we want to do is put something together so that we can use this. We have to take this control in a certain direction, okay? So now as he comes in, he just feeds me a straight again. Boom. By the way, you notice we haven't done any circular stuff with them. It works exactly the same way. We'll get to that later on. But uh, as we come in, I lay across this. I've got my options. I'm going to basically, from this point, I'm just going to take what's there. If I'm really low down here, I'm just going to reach and take this. If I end up, as he throws it, if I end up high here and I end up here, that's fine. I'm just going to take this back, OK? Now, if he throws it again and I end up, I don't know, here for some reason, I just feel that taking the neck is a better option or turning it this way. I'll take that, OK? One thing to remember when we're doing any of that is we want to keep forward pressure on this person at all times. Because if we don't, if he comes in with this punch, and I lay across this, and I take this here, and I'm just kind of pulling on this, there's nothing stopping him from striking me, just running straight forward and bowling me over or whatever. Especially as I get higher up with the arms, the necks, any of this stuff. I don't want him to be on balance at any time. So if I'm not totally, as he feeds it, if I'm not taking him off balance at the moment, I need to be keeping him moving. moving. The best way to do that usually is forward pressure. So as he comes in, boom, if I get this arm here, I just want to walk him, OK? I just want to walk him out there. So I'm going to grab that, and I'll keep him moving backwards. Now, this is the really important part, because I've already gained the control, so I can forget about the control because I have it. The next part is putting in our tools. And what we want to do there is while we have him moving backwards, against his will, he's pretty much helpless there. That's where we're going to put our tools in, OK, our technique. So as he brings that in, boom, I get this. I'm moving it backwards. From there, I got a natural for a knee right there, OK? Compound that again. I grab it. I can move it up. I can knee, and I can headbutt, OK? Once again, there, I can grab this. I can move him up. I can knee, I can headbutt, and I can elbow, OK? This is just compounding. These still will not work very well, OK, unless you've got this forward pressure. I'm keeping pressure. It's no different than if he comes in, and I move this here, and I push him, OK? But I can't just push him, so I need a, a vehicle to get me there. So I'll get the Thumag, and then I can push him, and then I can knee, and I can elbow, OK? Now, other side is no different from here. Only thing that's happening with a side change is as he comes in, his body might react a little bit different. I just got to find his center line and walk him backwards. Boom. It's the same thing, OK? Now, that's right. OK, so now if he's coming in on center line, and I lay on him, I want to find where his base is, where his center line is, push him backwards. I don't have a lot of time to do that. So that's why I think Dumug is a really good vehicle for doing that, because once I've got control of him, I can move him backwards, and then I can put my tools in. It doesn't matter on the tools. You can use you know, big weapons like a head, butt, an ear, and elbow, or you can use a light one. It could be just simple coming here, boom. Not that it crosses that light. It's still a really powerful tool. But it doesn't have to be an extremely powerful tool. It can be something as simple as a sweep also. As you're bringing him here, I could sweep this leg and take him to the ground. Smash. And as he's sweeping and he hits the ground, that can be a heavy blow too. So it doesn't have to be anything hardcore or anything, or anything that requires strength. It can be extremely simple. You know, simple as strike in the throat and letting someone go backwards with the weight of their own body. I think we'll cut it there. OK, so now we did the Dumog on the center line. We've got our attachments. We've got our stuff all the way up to the neck. We're putting some tools in there. What we want to do now is we want to do a little bit of this outside circular line, OK? As Paul comes in, he see, feeds me a circular line, one of those. Just freeze every second. Now, this opens a whole different ball of wax up, because now his arm isn't across his body closing. Everything is open, so is his head. And he has extremely no chance of defending himself, except for that back arm, OK, which we're going to eliminate. Due to the fact that we have this attachment, we can get a hold of that Dumag. It's, we're going to have a little different opportunities here because we're on the inside line. I might not be able to grab the wrist the same way, but there's still some pulls here and whatnot. Now, I can, a really natural one, because I cut out in this 45, as he swings wide there, boom, use this side so you can see that, I'm just going to grab this. I'm going to go towards that arm with everything I've got, and then I get that Dumag. OK. Now that's getting the control, OK? So if he does it on this side, too, just so you can see that there, cut in here, I can get that arm, OK? Boom, you've got to be really forceful. That's not with your training partner, but when you're actually applying it, you've got to jerk this arm down, just snap it down as hard as you can, OK? So as it comes through again, boom, 
That's a natural. It's here. You don't have to really think about it. You just grab. You don't have to think, well, where should I grab? How do I initiate the grab? You just grab it. Boom. You're there. Okay? Once you grab that, as you're pulling, you're going to see a lot of natural tools. We went from the inside to the side here, but there's a lot of natural tools there. Boom. Okay? Especially as you jerk this, you'll notice it kind of exposes its face. Okay? Also brings it into a possible upward elbow. Okay? So now to do the other side, again, as we're cutting in there, if I go to this arm here, I'm going to always end up bringing this down to the side because I can't hold this up here and do any pulls from the side. It's just not efficient. Okay, it needs to be here. So what happens? The moment I do that, I close off the center, okay, which is a really good advantage place to be. Okay, so sometimes we're not going to want to do that. We're going to want to stay there. So if I'm here and I cut here, I don't want to necessarily take that doom off. So that's why the neck is also a really good option because now I can go straight in. Okay, I'm just channeling my energy forward. As he comes in and swings, boom, I come in forward. I get this neck. This arm's over here. I don't have to deal with it for however long it takes for him to deal with that. I'm not going to give him the time because I'm going to pull him around, right? Okay. I need to pull him around for a couple reasons. Not only control him, keep him from using that hand. I don't want body shots from there because that's going to do damage, right? Boom. Okay. Two things. Control him, keep him from using his other arm to attack me, and the third one is going to be so I can actually facilitate my own techniques. So as I'm bringing him here, I'm going to line him up. Okay, so it's important I don't cross my legs, deal with that. I got to stay in that same structure. Okay, fire that out. I get the neck. Boom. Okay, if I keep myself on line, center line, I can fire these shots, whether it's groin, it's ribs, elbow to the head, head butt, knee straight in. Okay, could be leg kicks from the back. Once I get this neck, I've got a lot of control because as I'm turning him, I can turn this here. Okay, we can go straight into choke. Okay. So as he feeds that out, we use this side so you can see that. Okay, I'm just going to go straight in on the center line. Okay, my body goes straight in towards the center line. These hands just get the back of the neck. Once you're there, you've got the whole control of the body. And you get extremely nasty because you've got thumbs in the eyes, whatever. You can fish hook and do all these wonderful things to control the head, but you really don't need to because once you have the head, you can do anything you want, any techniques you want. You can even pull back and go Western boxing. Okay, from this control, you go boom, boom. Okay. And what they're dealing with on that side is they're being thrown around from there. You're not, you haven't struck them yet because you're waiting to gain control. While you're gaining control, there's a lot of confusion in their mind, especially while they're being controlled. So their chance for defending themselves is a lot slimmer. Okay? So to review that now, we want to be coming straight up, catch that. If we go to this arm, we're going to end up taking ourselves to the outside. It's bound to happen, right? So sometimes we're going to want to just go straight in. In emptiness, we go on a straight. Okay, we just go straight in because we don't have to deal with anything. We're going to go straight in, boom. Because the moment you get to here, all your techniques are there. So it doesn't matter what system you're using or what method or what type of striking, you can launch them from here. Okay? If you decide you want to step back and lose that attachment to throw your technique, well, you've kind of wasted that entire initial sequence we did. When you were here and you stopped this one, you might as well do it from there. There's no use going for the neck. Once you get to this point where you've got that attachment, everything you use should be pretty much assessed about or from an attachment type of striking. One arm attachment, two arm attachment. Going in, boom, okay. This also facilitates in any of your takedowns, your ground stuff, because as you're here, I'm just going to walk him down slowly so he doesn't get hurt. So as I walk him down really slow, okay, so I just follow him down, boom, okay. End up right on top of the opponent. Good. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to demonstrate a little bit more on the, uh, I guess the flow, the transition, how Duma works throughout the body, how to gain that control. Okay, it's kind of important. So as he comes in and feeds a punch, okay, he gives me an attachment. Now, first thing we can do, just kind of more of a drill or an exercise to go through, is just run through those movements we were just doing. Okay, just as I'm pushing and pulling, I can go to the neck. Okay, I can cross this over. I can get a hold of this arm, push it up down, okay? I can feed through all these different movements without actually losing an attachment to his body. So that just kind of gives us a kind of a flow drill or something to work with. Gets us a little more familiar with it, okay? That's one way to kind of practice it. Eventually you have to take it to another level where you've got to do it against more of an open punching situation where you're getting fed strikes where you don't know exactly what's happening because you want it to be very spontaneous. You want it to work no matter what happens. Okay, so now if he 
we'll go from the out, maybe an outside shot or something. Okay, so if he swings this outside shot, and I take this attachment, like we said before, the moment we go here, we're going to get to that outside line, right? Okay. The moment I get that now, I'm going to go for control of the body. Now, there's nothing stopping him from actually using that other hand, except for the fact that I maybe can keep him off balance, and that's my job there, is to keep him from hitting me, okay? So you can actually work that around there, whereas he throws a punch in, boom. The moment I get that, I'm going to control this, okay? And the moment he gets in too close, where he gets a shot in, boom, i got to stop that side, okay? So then I'm going to bring this around again. Okay, I'm gonna control that. And maybe another shot might come in. Boom. Okay, so we need to control this side too. Okay, so you're kind of throwing him around like a rag doll. But in between there, he's gonna get moments where he feels confident enough to maybe use this arm. Right? Okay, so no matter what happens when you're here, you're just gonna shoot that out and bring this in. Okay, you're gonna keep yourself protected. Because eventually that shot's gonna come in. You might just do this to cover it, bring that over. Okay, but from Standing the gate and feeding those circular movements, you're going to get used to that attachment. Okay? And then from actually working through these dumogs, you'll get used to the motion. Okay? Then actually having him feed you with a glove on or whatever, some kind of power, and then actually pushing him around to the point where he's actually going to try and hit when he can now. Okay? We're going to get that, stop that shot. Okay? I could just stay on the side of his body. It keeps me pretty protected. Okay? So what that's going to do now is as you up that training, you get a person who's really trying to hit you, you're going to be able to deal with a lot more. You can't always stay from here and just feed these shots. It's not going to work for you. OK. OK, let's segment it from there again. OK, so just to review what we've gone over now, we basically built ourselves a box get ourselves a defensive structure, ourselves a method of defending against these oncoming attacks. Fairly simple stuff, but it's mostly the common stuff you come across. Anything. We didn't deal with a lot of leg attacks or anything like that, obviously, but that's just a whole other area there. Um, once we got those, that box built, we got an attachment when we were defending. Okay? From there, we got that attachment. We used it for pulls, pushes. We got those Dumog holds in there. That gave us our control. Once we got our control, we are able to set the person up to put in tools, whatever we want. It really doesn't matter what tools you use. It doesn't matter if they're, like I said, major powerhouse tools coming across, or they're small ones. It really, it's totally irrelevant. The fact is you've got control, you can do what you wish, pretty much. You take the person down, you can keep them standing up. If they fall down, well, then you just go with it. The thing is, you want to flow with it, you don't want to resist it, okay? So you can control the person, but you're kind of actually following with what they're doing, because some people, when you push them, they're just going to fall over. Some are just going to push towards you, so you pull them. You deal with that, okay? But now, once you got that control, you can put in there whatever tools from whatever system you have, doesn't matter. So that's what we want to do here. You want to give yourself something simple you can use to gain control on the majority of people that way, and then put something in that is going to be suitable for that situation, where it's thumbing the person in the eyes because it's a life and death situation, or stomping on their foot to make them back off. It doesn't really, really matter. It's up to you afterwards. Just you still need to get that control. Otherwise, you're going to be flying around in a fray of punches and kicks trying to stop everything, which requires an extreme amount of skill. So hopefully you've uh, got a bit of info from this here, and you can take this to whatever training methods you use and put them in with your techniques, make something come about from it. Good.